We're now 40 years removed from the original film in the franchise, and the Ghostbusters are back to save New York City once again. The only difference is now when you hear the line, who you gonna call? The answer is better writers, because this was a bit of a bumpy ride. Let's talk about it. What's up guys, I'm Sully, and today we're talking about the brand new entry in the Ghostbusters franchise, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. All you need to know about this one is that the story goes like this. When the discovery of an ancient artifact unleashes an evil presence, Ghostbusters new and old must join forces to protect their home and save the world from a second ice age. So I want to start this one off by saying that I'm not someone that's an absolute diehard fan of this franchise. For whatever reason, those original movies weren't introduced to me at a younger age, so I watched them much later on in life. I can fully understand why people love these films, but they just don't have that nostalgia factor for me, unfortunately. I enjoy my time with them, especially as a big Bill Murray guy, but I never really have the desire to go back and re-watch either of the original movies. I know, lock me up and throw away the key. I'm sorry. So anyway, fast forward to when Ghostbusters Afterlife came out a few years ago, I was genuinely surprised by how much I enjoyed myself. Sure, it was kind of a rehashing of the original movie, especially when it came to the villains, but the new characters were enjoyable, there was a fresh change of scenery, and it had its heart in the right Right place. So I was obviously really looking forward to that trend continuing with this new entry, but unfortunately, it's looking like these guys have crossed their streams one too many times at this point. Now, don't get me wrong, there is definitely some fun ghost-busting action along the way, which is what you really want when you go see a movie like this. The visuals are up to snuff, the action is exciting, and the overall tone is where it needs to be. But the general plot of the film relies so heavily on cramming in as much as it can from the previous movies and hitting all of those trademark nostalgic beats to the point that nothing truly feels fresh or memorable anymore this time. A big part of that is due to how the legacy characters and the new characters were balanced out in this movie. They want to please new fans of the franchise. They want to please old fans of the franchise. And giving us all these random rapid fire snippets of every character involved is how they thought they were going to do that. But it ends up being a pretty disjointed and frustrating experience. Finn Wolfhard is in the film too little and is given nothing to do. McKenna Grace might be in the film too much but doesn't have an interesting arc, which is a huge bummer because she's the best part of the previous film. And the legacy characters are pretty much just along for the ride at this point. Obviously, the scenes we get of them all teaming up and fighting these new ghosts together are genuinely a fun time, and those are the high points of the film. But it's just not enough to outweigh how the entirety of the group is handled in this movie. When it comes to the adventure itself, I think there's a lot of false actions advertising going on here. Based off the trailer, you'd think that the majority of the film takes place in this frozen tundra version of New York City, and the Ghostbusters need to figure out a way to save the planet, but the truth is that none of that even happens until the last 15 minutes of the film, which is a huge letdown, because one of the big reasons I was excited for this movie is that we were promised a brand new big bad villain, but also we were coming back to this familiar setting that was going to have a huge twist with it. Frozen Empire is honestly a terrible subtitle for this film, it should have been called Frozen Coffee Break or Frozen Catnap, because if you blink, you'll miss that part. I seriously wouldn't have minded if the entire second half of the movie took place in this frozen solid version of the Big Apple. I feel like there are a lot of interesting scenarios they could have come up with and places they could go with that in mind. Times Square, the Empire State Building, Yankee Stadium, you can actually leave that one frozen solid, you won't hear me complaining about it. Go Sox. But that's an idea that they could have really run wild with, and we don't get much outside of what we already saw in the trailers, which is a massive missed opportunity. And that really affects the overall stakes of the movie as a whole. They somehow feel lower than ever this time around, even though there's a demon on the loose trying to turn the entire planet into a popsicle. You'd think that would up the intensity a bit, but it's introduced so late in the game that it's an afterthought. All in all, this is probably the worst Ghostbusters movie we've gotten so far, not counting the 2016 version that doesn't connect to anything. That was a fever dream. We don't talk about that. But with all that being said, I didn't absolutely hate my time with this movie. It just gave me the feeling you'd get if you ate the same thing every day over and over for a month straight. Even if you like it, at some point you'd be like, all right, can we do something to switch it up here? Maybe add a little spice? Overall, guys, I found Ghostbusters Frozen Empire to be a very mixed bag. On the one hand, it's easy to enjoy the overall tone of this world, the action sequences, and the dynamic between these characters. But at the same time, it feels very much like a sequel that's just using 
using a cookie cutter, copy and paste type of formula to go through the motions and make people forget they pretty much already saw this movie 40 years ago. Die Hard fans might enjoy themselves, but if you're not one of them, this doesn't have the juice to win you over. These proton packs need an upgrade. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire gets a Sully score of two and a half stars. So that's my review for the latest Ghostbusters movie. What do you think is the best legacy sequel we've ever gotten? I'm probably gonna have to go with Top Gun Maverick, but let me know what you think. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys at the next one.